morning everyone. Today I slept a little bit longer, probably a little bit later, but I was watching Champions League. That's what we're gonna talk about this morning. Freezing morning, minus 125 degrees at home. That's Celsius, that's 30 Fahrenheit. And yeah, uh, before we get to the Champions League, just a uh, very quick Copa Libertadores update. Uh, we don't know a lot more, but we know that the final will not be played in Argentina. That's what Conmebol decided, because Argentina is not fit of hosting this final. Uh, which in itself is a little bit of a ridiculous statement, uh, but yeah, they are not able to pull up the security uh, necessary for this final. So yeah, uh, I think everyone wants to have this game played and yes, a lot of damage has already been done, but I think uh, many think this can still be made up if we have a great game. What we won't have is a great atmosphere at the Monumental, but okay, uh, with River fans attacking uh, they probably lost their right but this it's such a it's such a um, mess anyway I mean if you hear this with tickets being stolen and uh, ultras and parabravas uh, hogging up tickets so it it's a big mess. It's a big mess and it's not that it's unknown. I mean, uh, it's, I think, well documented that Argentina has this problem and there is not much uh, will to attack this problem. Um, yesterday I read again that there were British officials sent to kind of clean up Argentina and after half a year they just left in disgust because it's nothing like the hooligan problem that has been in England which was made, which was not very organized it was more like uh, you know factions of the clubs the team supporters that yeah they organized to meet themselves to uh, uh, to fight or you know it was part of the culture but it was never uh, this level of organized crime that it seems to be in Argentina and otherwhere as well. I mean, uh, even in Europe. Look a little bit into the Balkans and you will see that there is similar crap happening. And I am, and Italy is also not an innocent child in that as well. But enough of the Libertadores Champions League. Uh, and uh, funnily enough, I mean, yes, the Boca River final, the 2 2 was a great uh, game per se, but if I look at the quality, at least of one of the games that, that, that I watched yesterday, had the same result. That was a better quality, but not as big names, in my opinion. Uh, you know, uh, you might have a different take on it, but I think the Boca River. They are, yes, yesterday, I think there were only a few teams that played that have a bigger. Name, so to speak, than Boca and the River. Um, and one of let's go through it it's Ajax, Bayern, uh, I would say uh, Real, maybe Roma. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure, maybe for me personally, but uh, that I think is, is disputed in Manchester United, Juventus, everyone else does not have a bigger name than Boca and the River. Okay. Uh, the game, I watched actually two games yesterday, thank you, tiered kick of times, and it was clear from, to me, the, actually the most interesting game to me was Ike and Ajax, uh, simple, simple for the reason I really wanted to have that Ajax uh, secures their spot, and the game itself was not great, it was marred, uh, and I didn't actually realize it until a little bit later I checked. Uh, social media where I saw that Ike fans actually attacked the away sector uh, of Ajax which in itself is a little bit I mean the stadium was at best half full 
the Ajax sector was very full and it was in the lower bowl so in the upper bowl there was enough space for other fans to hurl stuff in which is the same that I saw at San Siro or other Italian grounds which is always a little bit odd if you have the away fans below you because they are open to abuse at any time so that was maybe not the happiest of scenes the game itself was very monotone Ajax having possession rarely threatening I think they had the hit in the second half they hit the post seemingly out of nowhere the first chance that Ajax had was uh, just before half time which was actually I think in, in that half the most uh, dangerous uh, play but yeah of the bridge uh, but yeah there was not uh, it was really monotone and then it, it happens I think 68th uh, penalty was given after uh, Chigrinski that is a that looks like a grizzled veteran to me <laughs> uh, he had his he had a big wound on his back and had it uh, stapled I, I, I almost couldn't watch uh, I know this wound looks worse than this, but when they come with the staple up, uh, I don't even want to imagine that. But okay. Uh, there was a. Uh, I think it was a free kick or a cross in, and I think it was a free kick. I don't even know that. No, I should have watched the highlights again. Um, and the Ike player went out with, with, with his arm in, 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 in the box. Pretty clear handball. Uh, in my opinion, and yeah, got a penalty, and he was sent off for with yellow red. Also, um, justifiably so. I mean, uh, he, this was one of those handballs where it was clear he's going out of his way to. He makes the movement towards the ball and not away from it. So uh, no arguing there. One nil, Tadic, kind of a lucky. Uh, he, right in the middle low, I mean the goalkeeper was right there, that, uh, it was a little bit of a lucky penalty penalty and four minutes later, uh, counter attack, uh, ball go goes to Huntila who plays it on to Tadic who slots it in 2-0 and the game was done and thus there was really not much coming anymore Ajax seals their, round, their place in the second round, regardless of what Bayern was about to do at that point, it was either Benfica or Bayern and while it was not the game that I watched then, although this was more of a classic uh, matchup than almost any others that I played, I let's talk about that quickly. Bayern really bounced back from uh, the 3-3 against Düsseldorf and destroyed Benfica. And Arjen Robben uh, scored two Arjen Robben goals. Uh, I cannot say it differently. Uh, Almost any goal that Robben scores is a copy of the other and no one can stop it. That's I think the most interesting part about it. So Robben makes it 1-0, 2-0 Lewandowski, 3-0 there were more chances. I think Befica had no shot on goal whatsoever. Uh, absolutely, uh, dom absolute domination by Bayern. Befica gets a goal I think 38 seconds into the second half. Uh, substitute player but a few minutes later Lewandowski makes it 4-1 uh, and then uh, Ribery 5-1 absolute domination the group is decided we have uh, not 100% decided with Bayern now with 13 ahead of Ajax with 11 uh, Benfica will have a third spot because I cannot uh, get that anymore and that's the group more or less. I think uh, finishing first or second, uh, we have to see. I mean, in the last few years, it was not that much of a difference. The second game I watched, I was almost going for Juve against Valencia, but then I said, nah, I want to see Lyon against Manchester City. Uh, mostly because Lyon gave the City already some trouble in Manchester where they won. And I wanted to see that that, that, that group has a little bit, I mean it's not a big name group but it's uh, a lot of offensive playing teams so a lot of goals in that group and the game weird jerseys uh, Manchester City I think would have played in light blue uh, but then again okay. 
everything, I'm sure, was the reason behind them playing in purple and orange. Um, Lyon, surprisingly, had the better of the first half. Uh, City had more of the ball, but Lyon should have had two goals. There was one where Memphis, uh, Depay, right at the, at, the, at the beginning, I mean, open net that he cannot really make a good uh, connection with the ball. And then I think Corny, I want to say uh, a little, little bit later on, uh, had another sitter that should have been in goal. Um, so City very lucky. There were more chances. I think Lyon really dominated City in the first half. In the second half, uh, City comes out a little bit more uh, confident. But it's Lyon that makes the goal. Corne uh, makes his second against City. Beautiful shot, 1-0. Uh, and then City really got, got going and I had the feeling uh, it's not gonna last long and yes, Laporte very shortly after the 1-0 makes it 1-1. Uh, the game goes up down with slight advantage City, I wanna say. However, in the 82nd, 83rd, they get caught on a counter-attack just a hair not offside and Cornet makes his second 2-1 uh, and at that point uh, Lyon is safely qualified um, with nine points and even has uh, holding a tiebreaker against City um, but it was not to be because shortly thereafter after another standard and uh, it's kind of funny because standards is not City's forte uh, but after another standard uh, City Equalizes through Aguero, a header, almost smallest player on the field. Or if, not, if he was not the smallest, he was the second smallest player on the field and uh, scores a header. Makes it 2-2 uh, and then, oddly enough, um, the other game was locked at 2-2 as well. Uh, where Donet got a very quick lead 2-0 in Hoffenheim. Since I'm officially, uh, Hoffenheim came back made it to do and it was standing like that and at that point a uh, draw would have secured passage for both Lyon and um, City and the last five minutes it was clear both of them did not attack anymore they both thought this is through and they will qualify and yeah the problem is that Donetsk made a third goal and now Donetsk has a home game against Lyon where they can secure uh, qualification. Lyon has not lost, they only have one win in Manchester and everything else on the rules. Um, not sure, I think Lyon could have uh, gone with a loss as well because, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, it seemed odd to me that Lyon is not going for the win. Um, yes, City was maybe a little bit more threatening in the second half, uh, but now you're in a little bit of a pickle, I gotta say. Uh, it could have worked if um, Donetsk wouldn't have scored the winner, which actually was another thing. I mean, uh, the second half, Hoffenheim had chance after chance after chance to, to get the win. They didn't. And then, uh, so only on the defensive uh, Donetsk, but then the last hat that the Mr. coming out, hitting twice the post and then even scoring the winner um, through Tyson, so uh, who scored two goals. So yeah, the uh, group is interesting, it's the last really interesting group of E through H, uh, because we only know that Man City is qualified. Lyon is still not through, they have secured uh, um, going through the winter and playing, uh, still at least playing in the Europa League. Hoffenheim is, needs a Lyon win and then a win in, C in City to make it to the Europa League. So yeah, uh, and it's a final between Lyon and Donetsk for the last qualifying spot. By the way, can I say that the Donetsk away kids are just atrocious. Other games, uh, the, the second early game was between CSKA Moscow, CSK, uh, uh, against Pilsen at home. They actually got an early lead through a penalty, unnecessary penalty, but a uh, valid penalty. Um, had chance to make it 2-0 uh, a plenty, I gotta say. Then um, uh, Pilsen gets a penalty 
and uh, was saved by Akiveev and at that moment I think uh, Tessica looked really good uh, but no Pilsen came back they made it 1-1 uh, Prohaska who missed the penalty and it was kind of uh, this weird game where again uh, Tessica is more attacking because they needed the win to actually have a shot at making it to the next round uh, but they didn't get it, and instead uh, Pilsen gets the winner. Uh, that basically gives uh, Pilsen an advantage for the Europa League spot. And uh, Jessica, despite having won against Real Madrid, uh, having only won, uh, gotten a point that Pilsen now looks in a bad spot. That result also meant that no matter how uh, Roma against Real finishes, both are already qualified. Great, I thought. Uh, I couldn't watch that game anyway, that was probably the one that I would have chosen, although I'm not sure. Leon City seemed, seemed, seemed to be from the get-go the better game. Uh, gotta be honest with that. So yeah, uh, they were quali qualified. The game actually was a little bit far security since uh, all the Roma strikers, uh, Jacko hurt himself in the warm-up, then Sharavi got uh, injured. Um, Rossi was out and so it was all a little bit not going well for Roma but they dominated the first half and had two clear chances to make it and as always as if you if you don't make your chances uh, a team like Madrid is gonna punish you and that's exactly what happened that they sh shot themselves in the foot I, I, there was a ball coming from a Roma defender Bale he would be miles offside but of course it's not he's not because the ball is coming from the Roma defender who I guess wanted to head it back to, to the goalkeeper or something like that Bale uh, clear path on goal makes it 1-0 Roma I think could have then had even equalizer nothing like that and uh, in the end uh, Vasquez makes it 2-0 and the game is done and dusted Real Madrid wins the group uh, Roma is second, and yeah, it's now Pilsen and Tessica. Uh, uh, where, yeah, um, Tessica needs a better result than Pilsen. It's as easy if, we, if both of them lose, um, Pilsen goes on. And Pilsen has a home game against Roma, who has not much to play for. So I think Pilsen looks good here. Uh, I also, uh, going back, I would uh, rely on Lyon getting the. A necessary point in Donetsk uh, to advance, although I wouldn't put it uh, out of Donetsk's reach. And I hope that Ajax beats Bayern, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. The last group was the Juve group, uh, where Juventus was a similar game against like the Manchester at home game. They have chances, uh, they get their goal early in the second half. Ronaldo dancing through the Valencia um, defense and laying it right on Mandzukic, who is just the right place, right time, uh, slots at home. Valencia had a huge chance right at the stroke of halftime, uh, where Chesney made a wonderful save, uh, gotta be said. But Juve was always in control and again they miss making the second goal. Uh, this time though Valencia was a much less dangerous team than uh, United. So they get the win which means that if Manchester United wins uh, they are also through to the second round. And they had many chances to make it 1-0, 2-0 uh, even in the first half. But then Bern got it going a, a little bit. And Bern actually, in the second half especially, had a huge chance to, uh, to, go, to go ahead. Um, with United again, kind of having a lot of punch early, but then not being able to make the chances. Uh, Ibe didn't do much then anymore. They were more defending to get the point in Old Trafford, which is still a remarkable result. And it was Marouane Fellaini who scores the winner in stoppage time. At a point where I think everyone thought this is gonna end in, in, in a draw because there was really not much coming. But the way he scored it, uh, gotta congratulate him. This was a lot of uh, spatial awareness and where the ball is and so on. Also, why did he get rid of his afro? Uh, you almost couldn't recognize him with uh, short hair. I, 
I, I, I don't know, uh, Fellaini and Witzel are those two players that I actually, uh, I cannot imagine without Afro anymore. But then, uh, do you remember Henrik Larsson uh, for Sweden, who had all these great dreadlocks? Uh, and then he got known at Celtic and Barcelona for a KK Rose being completely short. So, yeah. But yeah, that group is all is also pretty much decided. We have Juve and United going on. Um, it's not clear who is second and who is uh, first. We have Valencia in the Europa League and we have EB unfortunately being out of the competition. But you know, you got at least you got a point and maybe now you have a home game against Juventus. Where it's not clear what Juventus will do, whether they will go for the win, will play a first team squad, or if they rest some players, as I said. Uh, many things aside, the only thing that's the only in those four groups, the only thing that's left is the spot between Lyon and Donetsk. Kind of a little bit underwhelming. And even that was just by a hair uh, that it uh, would have been already decided. So thank you, Donetsk, for scoring that winner to keep a little bit interest in these four groups so yeah i think that's the game to watch i, I hope that sky doesn't take it and that they'll go for the big names uh, but yeah i'm afraid they might they might go for Bayern, I, ajax Bayern, which is a good game but i think you gotta watch donetsk Leon. that's what i'm saying i'm looking forward today uh there are two huge matchups um the biggest of course is psg against liverpool but also um, uh, Tottenham Inter is not as much, you know, it's a must win for Tottenham and then still Inter could go on. But yeah, that's also an interesting one. Well, let me know which games you watched, whether you agree with my assessment on Libertadores and uh, of course Champions League. Uh, it was actually nice to watch those two games yesterday. Um, the um, Lyon City game made up for the monotone Ajax game gotta say that and yeah give me a thumbs up if you like the video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i will talk to you soon about more champions league tomorrow up until then bye